Watch out for those stingrays. Let's freeze the video and talk about the surf launch conditions here at Bolsa Chica State Beach. Today we have a heavy marine layer, a little onshore airflow, 70 degree water, surf in the two to three foot plus range, and a low to medium tide. These kind of conditions are typical of Bolsa from May through July. When the surf forecast is two to three foot and there's a plus sign, it means the surf will be predominantly two to three foot, where the plus indicates there'll be occasional larger surf. In other words, super fun conditions for launching your kayak. As far as preparation goes, you just want to make sure all your gear is squared away because flipping your kayak in these conditions is a real possibility. You want to be confident, but at the same time, you want to be prepared for failure. With the Stealth, all your gear is stored inside the watertight hull, so there's really not much to do in the way of preparation. But what do you do if you have a kayak that doesn't have much internal storage? I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail here, but here's my two cents. You'll hear people tell you to make sure all your gear is tethered. Well, tethering your gear is fine when you're outside the surf zone fishing and you want to avoid dropping your expensive gear in the water. But when you're paddling or pedaling through the surf, forget about it. Your gear needs to be strapped down tight. Your fishing rod stored horizontally, never vertically, and all your equipment that you want to keep dry needs to be in a dry bag. This includes your fish finder, reel, cell phone, wallet, keys, and so on. Sure, dry bagging your reels is a total pain, but you'll be so glad you did when your kayak is bobbing upside down in the surf zone and your reels are not full of salt water and sand. While we're watching Anthony paddle out through the surf, here's a little tip for you guys in paddle kayaks. On lower tides at Bolsa, you will need to paddle anywhere from 50 to 75 yards to clear the surf zone. Most pedal kayaks are not great paddle kayaks, especially larger pedal kayaks like Hobie's Pro Angler or Old Town's Big Water. My advice is to go with what you know and don't bother with the paddle. Instead, just wade out a little deeper, drop down your rudder, Lock in your pedal drive and wait for a lull in the surf and go straight to the pedals. This will really improve your chances of achieving a successful surf launch. Sometimes the hardest part of the surf launch is just hanging onto your kayak in the shore break while you're waiting for a lull, which is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just waiting for a little bit of calm water so I can hop in the seat and uh, get going with the launch. And my opportunity's coming up here in a second as soon as this last bit of white water gets by. Now you'll notice the second that I hop in the kayak, I immediately start paddling. Uh, the main goal, you just want to get out of the shore break. And so uh, you don't want any wasted time. As soon as you're in that seat, get a couple good strokes in, get a little forward momentum going and uh, work your way out of the shore break. So once I get past this next bit of white water here, I'm basically in the middle section now. And then you decide what you're going to do. Are you going to hold back and just wait until the outside waves calm down? Or are you going to gun it? And in this case, I just go ahead and I go for it. The surf's not real big, uh, but my timing could have definitely been better. So because of that, I'm going to have to paddle through a few waves here. And uh, regardless of whether you flip your kayak or not, you're definitely going to get wet on a surf launch. There's no getting around that. And like I said, the main goal, you want to keep your kayak squared up, pointing straight into the surf, and uh, definitely maintain that forward momentum. Right here, I guess that was perfectly bad timing there where I hit the wave right as it's breaking, and you can see it's driving the kayak backwards. 
but not a huge deal at this point because we're just about out of the surf zone. A couple more good strokes and we are good to go. Got hammered by that one way. Yeah, I don't think it, it didn't matter too. It's not real big. It's just, it's just there's a lot of wind swell, so you got a lot of this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, I would go ahead, go hard now. I wouldn't sit there. So, Anthony and I successfully paddled through the surf and had an awesome day of fishing, and now it's time to paddle back to the beach. Here's the simple truth. Paddling back to the beach is always, I repeat, always trickier than paddling out through the surf, but it's also the most fun. But before I paddle my 18 foot long kayak back to the beach, I wanna make sure there are no surfers in my path, no surfers that are starting to paddle out at my landing spot, and most importantly, no small children playing in the shore break at my landing spot. If any of these things are true, I will adjust my landing spot accordingly. If my kayak flips while paddling back to the beach and washes back to the shore without me, everything in its path is at risk. Let's freeze the video right here and I'll explain my approach to paddling back to the beach. While I'm waiting for the surf to die down, also referred to as a lull, I like to position my kayak so I'm parallel to the shore. By doing this, I can clearly see my landing spot on the beach, and I can also see waves that are approaching the surf zone. By doing this, I only need to do a quick 90 degree turn when the lull comes and it's time to paddle hard for the beach, or a quick 90 degree turn out to sea if I spot a large wave coming that is gonna break outside of where I'm sitting. Never sit with your bow pointed directly at the beach and your back to the waves until you're ready to paddle hard back to shore. Once I make that commitment to paddle back to shore, I paddle as hard as I can. The last thing I want to do is eat it in the outside break and have my kayak wash all the way back to shore without me in it. And typically I'll avoid riding waves when I'm going back to shore, but this uh, little wind swell was just too tempting to pass up. And if you're unlucky and you wipe out, flip your kayak in the middle section or in the shore break, it's not a big deal. Your kayak will just kind of drift into shore. It's not going to come flying in like it would if you wiped out on the main break. On this particular day, everything went pretty smoothly and made it back to the beach without any drama. It was a great day out on the water. So, hey guys, if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything cool about surf launching, hit that like button. Subscribe and press the notification bell so you know when the next Lost Horizon fishing videos are released. And as always, I will see you out on the water.